Bonjour à tous, bienvenue à cet épisode de Ressort Global de Patinage. Aujourd'hui, notre invité spécial, Laurent Dubreuil. Bonjour. Et, comme d'habitude, Michel Whitmore. Hi, the everybody. second fastest <laughs> in this episode. <laughs> hey there, skate fans. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Here is another episode of the Global Skating Network. As per usual, Mitch Whitmore and I, Victor Althar. But in this episode, we got a special guest. Hello, my name is Laurent Dubreuil, I'm a skater, I guess you know who I am. <laughs> Thank you for introducing me. Yeah, yeah, no <laughs> problem. <laughs> You've been mentioned a few times already, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> the viewers should be aware. Are you ready? I'm Laurent Dubreuil, and you're watching Global Skating Network. Larry, let's start with uh, your, well, since we're talking about intros, we've got a nickname for you. I think Stephen Hartman came up with it. The Dad Bod God. How do we feel about this nickname? I like it. I love it, man. Like, it's not about looking fit. It's about skating fast. Yes. And you're doing a pretty decent job of that. You yeah. won uh, the 500 this last weekend at the Four Continents. Yeah, yeah. What'd you think? I it was I didn't think I would win with that time if you asked me the day before, but uh, like you know the top five in the world was there in the World Cup standing. Yeah. So if you beat those guys, it means that it's a good race. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that was a little surprising to me too. I expected to see a couple thirty threes, but maybe just the big boys uh, readjusting to this ice again. Yeah. Yeah. No. For for me at least, like we showed up two days before races only, right. so altitude, faster track, uh, you know, just getting you. And it's also the first of like. Big races in a month still, you know, so you don't right. want to be your, at your best a month too early. Right. So it's you're just getting into it still. Yeah. And I guess on that same topic, how do you feel about the World Cup here, so this coming weekend, versus the World Championships? Uh, well, to me, the main goal is the World Championship, right. that's for sure. And even then, second goal would be maybe the Quebec City World Cup, because that's my home track and it's first time having a World Cup there. And, you know, it, friends, family, uh, everybody's going to be there to see me skate. So, uh, but, but. At the same time, you know, the the overall uh, World Cup standings to me is something that's important. important. And I've always, if I had one race to win, obviously it's World Championship or Olympics and Olympic seasons. But I think the best skater in the world to me is the one who wins the most races throughout the year, or the most points and consistency. You know, it's not just about one race to me. Right. So that's something that's important uh, in my mind. It's super interesting to hear. I feel like we've asked other people the same thing. Um, we asked the coaches panel as well, well like very different opinions. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah they they were kind of all over the board. Some put a little bit more emphasis on yeah. all arounds or sprints. Um, some said just the Olympics, and then I think Ryan also had said seeing that consistency over the yeah. season. I agree with you. Um, it's, it's like so in ski, right? Like the Crystal Globe is maybe bigger than the World Championship in ski. It's right. always yeah. where you come from, right? And to me, like showing it week in week out is. Like, who's the best basketball player in the world is the one who's best throughout the season, throughout, too, you yeah. know? So, to me, that's how I see it. Yeah. I like it. You are kind of Mr. Uh, consistency when it comes to the 500 meter <laughs> men's. Yeah. yeah. You had a question Which, <laughs> Yeah, I, just, I think that's going to be crazy because I understand that sometimes we have people that also are so consistent, but mostly in the long distance races mm -hmm. because, like, the differences, differences are obviously bigger. But we look at the 500 meter races, they're, like, from 1st to 10th is basically nothing yeah and I do think you we've seen more Shigi this year yeah but if we look back at the last handful of years you've been the only person that's been consistently up there like what what's the key <laughs> I think it's uh, I got that consistent when uh, when I had kids honestly like just because I'm not nervous before races you know so what what can you what can happen that you mess up your race or like sometimes it's stress right you're too nervous but yeah. to me I'm just it's just a race and good race bad race I'm I'm still what's important to me is still my family and being a good father so for me I'm just on the line excited to be there it's my passion I'm just enjoying it you know I'm, I'm legit enjoying race days I get up in the morning I'm happy to be there yeah. and I don't think that's the typical approach at least like that's not how I was when I was younger when I was younger I was stressed and <laughs> Uh, which I think is normal, yeah, you know, yeah, if yeah, you right. care, you're stressed about something, but I still care, but I'm, I don't need to win, I just want to do good, and uh, I'm allowing myself to fail sometimes, mm -hmm. and I fail less um, uh, less often now that I'm allowing myself allowing to fail. Yeah. To, uh, very interesting insight there. So, so if there's a bunch of teenage guys out there looking for good advice, get a kid. 
<laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's <laughs> not a good No, no, that's not. But maybe take the mentality, but not with the kid. That's uh, not a good okay. <laughs> Wait on the children, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, wait, wait a little bit, yeah. Uh, that's that's so so true, though. If I, Probably all of us, if we would have thought that earlier on. I mean, oh, yeah. you learned so many things, same for me coaching. Like, I've learned so many different things that I wish I would have done earlier. <laughs> Don't we all? Uh, but, uh, yeah, right. So, yeah. But awesome to hear that. Yeah. So, on that same topic... Um, you know, how has it been being a father while still competing? Well, it's always been a like a lifelong dream of mine. I think I'm a bit sad at missing out my parents because my, both my parents went to the Olympics as skaters. Yeah. So, I, but they retired before I was born. Like uh, the, the, my dad skated the Olympics while my mom was pregnant, and he retired, and they were both done. So, I think because it's like my passion, it's their passion. I, I wish I really saw them skate. You know, right. and. I just wanted my kids, I wanted to have my kids early enough for them to remember what it's like to see their dad be passionate about something and happy right. and I hope I'm passionate about something after <laughs> skating also, you know, but like the odds are it's going to be less pa like, like right. less passion, that's what I love to do, right? So to me, um, it was important and so when I decided to have kids with my wife, we, I was fully ready to be a little bit worse skater because okay. I knew like from hearing about like how bad the nights are and and everything and and it's true like nights are really tough the first year and babies get up in the night crying and so I thought it would make me worse but it made me faster it just made me so much freer on the ice as I said before yeah. it's not the first time we hear this we had Howard Lorenzen on the show yeah obviously Lola Bridget is back at full force it's just uh, getting incredible which just sounds like to everybody we've spoken to the same thing like there's nothing harder than becoming a parent but you also grow with it like you become stronger. absolutely yeah and it's the most rewarding thing too right it's like yeah. it's so much effort but it's it's rewarding in a bigger way than how rewarding skating is you know skating is all about yourself as an athlete you're so selfish right yeah. like you everything's about you and and you nap during the day and then you don't go out because you're you, and, and like your friends you might not see your friends because you have a different schedule and but then once you become a parent like it's not about you anymore right <laughs> you like that's the oh no you don't have the option no not at all so like no naps anymore when the baby's crying and like yeah. wake up during the night and you know like so to me it would have made me worse but it just I don't know why like yeah. I guess we're not robots right we're human beings we have emotions and, and it just made me made my life whole in a way it wasn't before so it just made me faster I love to hear that so talking about your parents as well um, I've met your parents a couple times over yeah. the years and they just have a good outlook like you know excited to watch you race um can you talk a little bit about them and their history? Yeah. Uh, so both my parents were skaters. That's how they met uh, and started dating. So I guess without skating, I wouldn't be alive. Uh, so I have to thank skating for that. But uh, <laughs> it's just... It's their passion, right? My mom, uh, they, they skated in the 80s, went to the 88 Olympics. My dad in short track, my mom in long track. And my dad kept going, but in long track until 92. I okay. uh, went to those Olympics and then I was born. And unfortunately, back then, like you didn't get any money at all for skating. So you couldn't support a family skating. So they had to uh, retire when I was born, whereas I can still skate and, and support my family. So for me, it's uh, I'm lucky because I, I really wanted to do that. I wish I could have lived through their career as well, but uh, I saw some races on... There's a funny video of my dad getting his, uh, his ass kicked by Johan Olafkos in a 5K. <laughs> my dad was a sprinter, so it's not really a fair fight, but oh, yeah. uh, it's a funny race. It's on YouTube, I suggest too it. Bad. No, it was pretty good. <laughs> so, Larry, you were talking about uh, Johan Olafkos. So, kind of sticking with the same topic here. Who would you say is the best speed skater of all time? Uh, I gotta go with uh, Eric Haydn. Okay. I mean, five goals, five races, like five individual goals, five, only races you could win, you won them all. And wow. uh, I think there's something to say about uh, retiring on top as well. Like okay. everybody knows you could have gone for five more four years later, right? But yeah. uh, so I, that's my that's my answer, yeah. I like it. I like it. Jeremy Witherspoon said uh, <laughs> that he would go with Bart's answer and pick Jeremy Witherspoon. <laughs> no, he changed it. He said Dan Jansen, <laughs> but uh, he was just being funny. Do you have a do you have a skating idol? Somebody you looked up to? Um, I have a few. I mean, for for us in Quebec City, Gaetan Boucher is really the number one. Like the oval is named the Gaetan Boucher uh, Oval. Uh, our national center was named that as well, um, or still is. And uh, he won two golds in '84 uh, back when 
just like not just like speed skating in Canada, but like sport in Canada in general was just hockey, and, and that was it. Okay. Like in the '84 games, Canada won four medals and he won three of them. So like, is right. he's, he's really a legend? And I grew up hearing stories about him all the time because he, he was my parents' idol because he, right, he was the same time and or just a bit older. So uh, yeah, and then more recently, I remember one of my first skating like when I first got into it was the Vancouver Olympics okay. and I was there for 500,000 and Mote Baum won medals there and yeah. to me like he was a complete sprinter winning the Olympics you know yeah. that was some something I looked up to and then I got to skate against him so I thought it was pretty cool too to get to skate against your for a while yeah I was paired with Shawnee Davis one time too he really kicked my ass but like to me like being paired against guys you grew up skating yeah. or grew up looking at like it's, it's special for sure just looking at your Olympic career specifically um, in 2022, you were probably the favorite in the 500, and then you did not medal. Mm -hmm. Fourth, yeah, fourth. Um, how did you bounce back to still somehow win a medal in the thousand? And I say somehow because you were obviously much better in the yeah. five oh, yeah. than the thousand. Yeah, yeah, I think everybody thought at least you're coming away with a medal, if not gold. Um, you didn't, but obviously, yeah, yeah. found a way. I think winning a silver for me was like. It was a good Olympics, but I would have said, like, probably if you told me before, like, I would have said, like, silver in the, in the 500 and whatever, right. in the thousand, you know, like, and uh, and especially to win a medal, and most of my thousand meters medal have come when I've won 500s or won medals, right. you know, like, to not win a medal in my best event and come back <laughs> was pretty surreal week. Yeah. And um, I think I go back to this, but that's when, you know, having kids really helped me because, or I guess my son was not born yet, but my daughter was, and because. It just made me realize, you know, like failure is not the end of the world. And instead of being down and just depressed the whole week, you know, I yeah. bounced back after a couple of days. And I just thought, you know, there's another race that's just put off or hold on on this disappointment and wait until it's over to be disappointed. You know, like just you have another shot. And even if I don't medal, you know, I told myself, you know, man, like I was happy coming into the Olympics and I had no Olympic medal yet, you know, so. If I was happy with no Olympic medals before the Olympics, why shouldn't I be with no Olympic medals after the Olympics also? You know, like, yeah. it's not, I don't think I'm going to dream about it when I'm 70 years old with my grandkids, you know, <laughs> like, I, I don't think I care that much about it. So yeah. to me, it was like, just, I, I was disappointed, yes, but then again, it's not the end of the world. Just turn the page and focus on other things and try to bounce back. It's like really just knowing life is good with a bad race also. Yeah, 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 sure. exactly. Yeah, it's like, my daughter was, was, she was happy after the race you know she was proud of me she was like I saw you on TV daddy like yeah. she was happy you know like she was running around in the living room and it just makes you realize that if it, you know if the most important person in the world for me doesn't care about my results why should I care yeah you know dude I, I love that yeah <laughs> that mentality I yeah think. yeah it makes it easier to bounce back when you don't you, you know blame yourself or look you know like yeah. it's just it is what it is try again you know it, it's really cool to hear too because you go to the Olympics and of course, everybody feels that pressure, and oh, yeah. media oh, yeah. or like fans might think that, like it was expected to happen. He must feel such failure, but then you're saying almost the opposite. Like, ah, yeah, it sucks, but like, yeah, yeah, my kids don't. Care it's like so you know, well. obviously, you want oh, so one, great. you want one in your professional life, you know, in your skating career or whatever. But what's most important to me is not that, and and yeah. I I don't think you know like. See, when I see Gaetan Wushi, who's got four Olympic medals, chill out with my dad and his friends who have zero Olympic medals, he doesn't look happier than them. They yeah. all look happy, you know? Like He's actually very I think, unhappy. <laughs> I think he is happy, but what I mean is, like, I think it wasn't you don't medals. care anymore. No, yeah. it's just... Yeah. And what you remember at the end is not the medals, how many medals you won. Like, I think it's the moments and the, the yeah. emotions you went through and the challenges and successes and failures. And that's your life story, right? It's not yeah. about how many medals you won. I, I'm good with numbers. I remember how many medals I won, but I, I don't care that much about it. You yeah. know? Uh, 34 World Cup medals, six championship medals, or world championship medals, and uh, or individual. That's all individual. I don't care about team events that much. And uh, <laughs> and one Olympic uh, medal, yeah. Very cool. And counting, but uh, who cares how many I end up with? You know, you know something <laughs> I feel like I learned from competing against you was on the times that I did get to beat you, I felt like you were just so gracious. I don't know, you always came up and said, like, good race, or I, I don't know, just the sportsmanship I felt from you really matured me as an athlete too. 
because I'm like, fuck, like, why am I, <laughs> you know, looking back at myself, like, you may have had a bad race that day. Yeah, yeah. And when I had bad races earlier on, I'm like, all depressed. No, I'm not saying anything to anybody. People, yeah. And I realized, like, man, Larry is just like, <laughs> I don't know, you just dealt with it in such yeah. a good way. So I, I did learn a lot from you and, and a lot of the other Well, I, I really appreciate that. And I think probably my mom is going to be crying at this point in the video because she's going to be happy. <laughs> You're going to make, make her happy. But I think, to me, I always made a point of congratulating people like the all three medalists and people I thought yeah. had a good race and my friends who had good races because I think it's just sport right and to yeah. me I, I I take pride in winning because I know the other guys did their best and had good races yeah. and everything so to me I want them to race good you know I don't yeah. want to win because they, they, they fucked right. it up or, I want, them, I want to win you know exactly it's yeah. not the same I want them to be on the line to be at their best and I, I hope to beat them when they're at their best right. and so I'm I'm happy for people when they do good yeah. and it means a lot to me also when I do good and they they're, they seem genuinely happy to congratulate me, you know, yep. because that's to me that's we're like a, a band of brothers almost, you know, like we're we're competing against ourselves first and foremost, and their performances help me get better, and I hope I help them get better and drive them to get better. That's that's yep. one of my goals too. Love it. I think like you just said, you don't care so much about the medal count. Yeah. Like, I for example, I'm a little young, and you guys I grew up looking up to you guys, and I also don't, I don't think I'm, I've seen probably all of your races. I big fan of skating <laughs> um, that's why we're doing this <laughs> but I also wouldn't remember any of those medal counts but I, I do remember like the good sportsmanship like who how what people look like when they I know you wear the the weird Friesland hat thing yeah but things like Shani always that's one thing I noticed like he always like smiles a little no matter how bad it was he gives yeah. like a little wave just out of like almost like a yeah grateful kind of I agree that's important to me and I have a good story about Shawnee too like that like um, so he was world champion or Olympic champion every year from 2004 to 2011 then 2012 did not win a gold only won bronze at world championship <clears throat> and that was my first world championship when I was I was still junior but I, I got to compete in the senior world championship and then my flight coming back home the next day was through Chicago so he was flying back there and I knew he was disappointed, right? Because I, but like, I was like, Shawnee Davis, I can't not talk to him. Like, I have to talk to him. He's one of my heroes, right? So I go and super gracious, like, just had finished, like, you know, first year of his life, basically not being world champion right. or Olympic champion. And like, we talked, we talked for like an hour and a half before the flight, you know, like, very happy and not. I was asking him questions, but he was asking questions back, you know, and like, yeah. what can he possibly want to know about me? Like, I'm just a junior coming up, you know, but he was genuinely interested and it was a very like human moment and made me realize, you know, you don't, because you see examples like the last dance, like Michael Jordan's the greatest player of all time. He's a dick, you know, like he's yeah. not a nice person, but like I saw like, well, Sean, he's one of the greatest of all time and he, he was nice to me. He was a yeah. nobody, you know, so like, like you don't have to be a dick to be good. You can be, you can be human. You can have sportsmanship you, you, yeah. and one of my heroes was Federer also, uh, Roger Federer, yep. uh, because the same thing, you know, like sportsmanship, congratulating the other guy, just class, you know, like to me, that's more important than medals. Yeah. I, I really liked how you said the, like the band of brothers or like yeah. just that feel, I feel like that's the feeling I got to after good and bad races. Yeah. Just like everybody is in it together. We all want to beat each other, but also like we know that we, everybody knows the same struggles. I would oh, I yeah. feel like at oh, least yeah. like most of the people that are in that core group you're going through the same struggles day in and day out and absolutely you're just yeah trying to do the best you can it's, it's the beauty of the time trial sport also i think that it yeah for sure gets that out and people like yeah you can all have your best you can all pp the same day it's not yeah. like a, a soccer or a football match where for you to do good they gotta be <laughs> <laughs> it makes it easier when you you're fourth too you know you don't you didn't get screwed by the ref or you didn't get yeah. hit by <laughs> another guy or you know you're just That's three true. guys faster That's than you, you can. Yeah. 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 three guys faster than you like it's go shake their hands try it. to get better so Larry, we got another question. Who would be your current favorite skater? Somebody that is still racing right now, besides yourself. <laughs> I don't think I would say myself <laughs> anyway. Um, current favorite skater. I mean, t to me, like the, the best skater in the world is Jordan Stolls, that's for sure. Like to, to do what he's doing is just incredible. And I, I, it's like a wholly different category. It doesn't remind me of myself because he's so much better than me. <laughs> But uh, I, I really he did uh, <laughs> beat him this weekend, though. So. <laughs> yeah, beat, well, beat him by a tenth one day, and then <laughs> got beat by a second and a half the next day. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think to me, um, 
Takagi is really impressive. Uh, Miho, just like so many years in a row, we talk about consistency too, like just yeah, year in, year out, day in, day out, just winning thousands and fifteens always. And um, and even like 500, 3K, I think she's the best like uh, women skater in the world and has been for many, many years, in my opinion. Like to win world sprints in all rounds uh, in one's career is uh, yeah. very rare. And uh, yeah, I just... But again, she doesn't remind me of me because I'm just a pure sprinter. So I just don't understand how these skaters, those those skaters that can race 500, good, be good at it, like a 500 meter skater, and then go longer and be good at 15, like like Kimi or or Jordan or Miho and 10K. That's yeah. just and 10Ks. That's, that's just diff- yeah, that's crazy. But like Jordan to me, girl. that's that's something that I can't even imagine doing. So I have a <laughs> immense respect for people doing that. Fair enough. Uh, so switching gears a little bit, uh, you know, Vic and I have been doing the GSN channel for a few months now, yeah, um, and we're having a great time with it. And you know, this is something that kind of you and Will Dutton and maybe a few others did a few years back. Can yeah, you tell us about that. Yeah, we did it. Um, so it was uh, with uh, Mika. Uh, Pautala's uh, filming equipment okay. and uh, Will and I were hosting like kind of like you guys are doing a little bit uh, but we did it only one fall and then uh, Will retired so like we, we couldn't keep it going if oh, we had I've thought about it, about it a few years before I think we would have kept it going but yep. uh, life sometimes uh, happens And uh, but yep. I, we, I had a lot of fun to do it yep. uh, I think him and I are very passionate about skating like you two are and uh, I think it's something that's captivating if you if you know skating and you get to know the skaters that you watch and and know about mm-hmm. their knowledge and their how, how they think and I, I think it's something uh, hats off to you guys and thanks for the hat also yeah, yeah, yeah thank you yeah, speaking hats of hats on. yeah 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 <laughs> hats off but hats on yeah it's, we're gonna have to I have Dutton like on here too yeah. um, but yeah I mean partially this is inspired by you guys too so thanks for uh, starting hey, thanks it that, off that's me. that means a lot also I think we're doing a good job but as I said life happened but yeah. uh, we hopefully, loved it uh, yeah hopefully you guys can then. do it for longer than we did uh, yeah. and keep it going for many years I think we'll keep it going yeah who's your favorite skater mine yeah current skater I don't know if I rest. you don't have to say me <laughs> <laughs> it's not about me um, <laughs> <laughs> okay so Larry burning question here what would you do to change the sport or to make the sport better that's a good question. I think, I think more needs to be done to reach, uh, like, be more exciting for younger audiences. Uh, I think we are we're very lucky to have a, like a legit star in Utah uh, representing our sport and still being young and hopefully skating for many years to come. And I think, yeah. you know, like, I think you should use um, that popularity to turn it into real skating fans. You know, right. like, not just Instagram fans, but skating fans, yeah. because I think. The, the, also like I think the speed needs to translate better like better shots on TV maybe or something or because like it doesn't look like we're going that fast no. but I assure you we are yep. uh, 60k an hour or whatever miles an hour that is 45, 42 I don't, yep. I don't know the translation but like so it's it's. I think like you know a side shot at the Olympics where the, the, they go along oh, the there's just gonna yeah, say that's it. incredible that right super fast. <laughs> like yeah yeah that looks fast that yeah. looks cool like shots like this and, and just make it more exciting maybe press conferences before whatever I, just, I don't know but like like, it, because it's a beautiful sport once you get to know it, right? Yep. I, I really like that. And something that we've talked about, obviously, difficult while I'm coaching, he's skating. But something that we want to evolve towards mm-hmm. is getting more of that, like, quick content in between races. Or you just got off the ice and let's say you're pissed off or you're really excited. Yeah, and just getting those immediate, face, right, yeah, oh, yeah. right there. Promoting oh, yeah. the personality. Something, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Awesome. I have absolutely. heard a few times now that once people get to know the skaters there's a lot more fun drama in there and just like personal stories mm-hmm. that you get to know um like just even knowing about your family and that like that helped you as a skater i, I don't know i think that kind of stuff really turns into yeah. something um more than the, just the, the more drama a, a clock kind of like the yeah, Netflix yeah. More with the um formula one like i agree that's captivating it really to watch. brought yeah, in yeah, a yeah. lot of for sure so. for sure so many new fans because of that show yep. yeah so if netflix is listening <laughs> We got some speed skaters for you. We got Yuta. <laughs> yeah, Larry. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very different. <laughs> Featuring Jake Paul. Um, so this last weekend, we had the Four Continents Championships here in Salt Lake City. You guys got any takes on the racing? I I think it was good. It was a good warm-up, I think, for the World Cups, but some good times still being skated. Obviously, uh, Jordan's 1,000 was incredible. Yep. Uh, Miho and Kim, uh, Kimi's 1,000 uh, also. Like, the 1,000 was faster. It seemed like faster than the other races, yeah. I yep. think. 
but uh, just fun for me to see skate uh, skaters skate again after a long-ish break over the holidays. Yeah, the the women's 500 was pretty impressive, and that's, that's where true. we thought yeah. the men's was. Yeah. The winning time was a little bit slower. Your winning time, a little bit slower than. <laughs> try, I'll try harder. Thirty-three next seven time, yeah. is what his BB is, so I know he's capable of faster. Uh, um, so yeah, the, I thought the women's five hundred and thousand yeah. were pretty quick. Um, the battle between Casey Graham and Ted Yan was oh, yeah. pretty, a tenth of pretty a cool. That's incredible. Eight hundreds between first, second, third. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we had some good drama yeah. at the four continents in the, the long races as well we can also say that no doubt it was the highest level we had at the four continents yes and, I agree yes, and, and that's fun to watch too right like yeah, to have yeah. the best skaters on the line because um, there's some races where like you know Europeans is a big deal but like my men's 500 is much better here than at yes. Europeans so yes. like so to have all those guys on the line uh, is, is fun it's fun as an athlete it's fun for fans and uh, more of that please yeah I, I agree and like you said earlier the the men's 500 was the top five in the world yeah so I mean, the, the total level was, was after the race well worth winning <laughs> i spoke to austin cleave he came up and was like that was a good race yeah super super stoked season best he was second last with a 34. yeah, yeah. find a competition so where bad. you can be second last with a 34 yeah <laughs> not not a bad turnout there um we had some other big races happening i think the uh, youth olympic games is still going but some new faces on the scene yeah uh skater from turkey won the first ever winter olympic medal for turkey the youth That's olympics cool. or the senior olympics first one at the winter olympics yeah and then besides that we had the favorites uh german kid winning 515 and uh and Dahlman, angel Dahlman, has been winning winning medals whatever she's kind of all over the place <laughs> yeah. but she didn't win by as much as we oh, thought uh, she's been yeah. climbing up in the senior category so uh, yeah didn't didn't crush the field like we expected a um, little shout out to Sean Schwai as well first US uh, gold medal for uh, short track that was pretty cool to see yeah. we have not been studly on the men's side in short track in a little bit so that's nice to see somebody stepping up another big competition that we had was uh, talking about the four continents, the one country we didn't see was China. They stayed at home in China to skate China Games, a competition that I wasn't really familiar with, but from what you just told me, it's every four years. Every four years? Well, yeah, I heard because uh, Yuma told me because he, he trains with Ning and uh, Mehan, and uh, they win uh, pretty good prize money over there. <laughs> that just, uh, yeah, I'd stay just, back, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll skip the four continents for, oh, yeah, for sure. the big bucks. Oh, for sure, for sure. It's pretty crazy that they get this much prize money yeah. for a We're Chinese competition. But, six uh, digits for, uh, yeah. for a gold per distance. Yeah. And Mei Han won three distances. <laughs> yes, that's correct. <laughs> six digits. U.S. dollar <laughs> digits. Dollar is. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. I don't know what the price money were at the four continents, but I'm, I'm not assuming six it's six no, not the same. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> <laughs> we had the short track Europeans, and it wasn't as expected. No, definitely not the favorites that grabbed the the top the top step on the podium. We uh, saw the Italians go first and second on the women's side, even though we had some strong skaters from from Netherlands, obviously, and also Hannah Desmet, presumably in good shape. And then for the men, again, Italy also grab gold so uh yeah we got a new country in short track skating it seems a really strong one even without ariana fontana at the moment love to see that um you know back to long track here something we didn't talk about from the four continents was na hyun lee uh super close to the junior world record in the women's 500 and she's an a1 so yeah. she still has one more year as a junior coming up and she did set the junior korean national record so pretty uh pretty spicy one yeah. Got a good shot. Yeah, it's, it's incredible some of those Koreans and Japanese skaters at 16, 17, oh, what they can yeah. skate so much faster than what we were at the same age. Joji's, I mean, you went pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, not at 16, 17, maybe. Well, 17 maybe, but like not that fast. I mean, Joji's, Joji's junior world record stood for until you, right? Seven years until I beat it. That's, yeah. That's yeah. A, a good while. Uh, much faster than a lot of us went. Oh, yeah. So it was pretty incredible. Quick. Yeah, back in the day, 34 7, when 2000 three or something yeah, it's incredible uh, nine years i think nine years nice. yeah so one thing we thought was fair to mention we have over the last two episodes mentioned marike gronevoot first because she skated a 113 fastest second lap ever in a women's thousand meter and it wasn't even at high altitude and then the weekend after she skated their trials a 116 and didn't even make the team which we thought was kind of crazy it turns out she does more than just thousand meters she skated three marathons <laughs> 
a total of 230 laps on ice. She won all three of those, and the marathons are not easy in the Netherlands. Uh, so, you know, Marijke Gronenboot, it is fair. 160 yeah, yeah. is, is that what We understand 116 now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And also the bounce back before <laughs> Europeans and why she went so fast there. Crazy. I'm very interested to see how she does. Really, the whole mm-hmm. Zandlander team, because I have not seen them yet here. Um, so interesting to see how they'll Classic do. Yeah, they the, show up late. <laughs> which is odd, because the Jumbo team and Regaborg also much sooner than I've yeah. seen them in the past. So yeah. they're obviously taking this serious and want to go fast at altitude. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of our well, next topic. Not so, much. Yeah. so we'll see. Will we see world records in Salt Lake City this coming weekend at the World Cup? I, individual, I'm going to be boring. I'm going to say no. I think men's team pursuit, possibly. Norwegians like should beat their time from here in vain. However fast here in vain is, yep. it should be faster here. They've been here for a long time. Uh, yeah. And, uh, well, what's the, oh, yeah, mixed gender, really. I, I, I assume I assume there's going to be records there, uh, but individual. I, I hope, right? Like I hope I'm, I'm I like I love world records, right? But yep. I, I, my guess would be no. Okay. Yeah. I mean, based on four continents, I would, I would think that makes sense. Like the times were too far off. Yeah. And then when what was that four years back when we saw basically all the world records being broken, the air pressure was. Oh yeah, the World Cup was incredible. Uh, yeah, 2019, Cup final, like yeah. it's just hard to beat a time set that weekend because yeah. the ice was just incredible, yeah. air pressure, everything. So maybe maybe men's 5K, I could see who's like five six oh five in here in vain, like could do it consistently around. But yeah. yeah, but that's I, been my thought that, as well. It's, that's it's probably the one that's the most susceptible. Yeah, but it has happened twice before that Rose came to Salt Lake having skated the 605 yeah. in here in vain and then. Yeah, exactly. I think he's faster at home, maybe. right? Yeah. Like, he's yeah. better at sea level. So, I hope he does it. But I, I'm i curious. I i don't think it's going to happen. Okay. I, what do you say? I think the women's thousand also will be beat. I do think uh, maybe a couple of them. Uh, but I do think at least Yuda will break the women's record. Do you think? I think so. Yeah. I also think that if we look at the three favorites, which I think we, it's fair to say Miho, Kimi, and Yuda, they have all been here for relatively long yeah so yep they should be acclimated by then so before we move on to uh making our picks which larry's gonna take part in uh we wanted to talk about the world skate tour which oh, is yeah. in line even though it's not quite the season yep but still pretty big news vic you want to tell us about uh what's on the line there yes it's official now that there will be a world skate tour not the world inline cup not the world marathon cup but a world skate tour even though the other things that i just mentioned are still going to exist this World Skate Tour is just four events. We don't know where exactly. We know there's one stage in China, but more is to be announced. What we do know is the prize money is going to be very, very high, especially for inline skating. Each stage, the winner will get 10,000 euros for first place, and then it goes down to 7.5, 5,000, all the way down to 10th position. At the end of these four, there will be a total price per above 100,000 euros per gender and also a team competition with similar prize money. So uh, inline skating got... They're stepping up. Yeah, I'd yeah. love to see it, and it's been surprising to me that that hasn't already been a thing because there are so many inliners in the world. I mean, look it just seems like there. nobody's gotten it together as an organization to make this happen, but really cool to see, and I'm looking forward to a consistent series of races on inlines. Yeah, same, and I think it has the potential to be at the Olympics. I think the level is yeah. there to be at the Olympics. Absolutely. I think they just need to get it together federation wise but structure needs yeah, to be there yeah. but the level of skating is absolutely there yeah yeah i mean think about how many good skaters have come from inline yeah. over to the ice it's incredible what if they just stayed and had their <laughs> own sport <laughs> or maybe did both you know at the same level so totally possible and should be an exciting a good start world we, tour uh, we also saw the first race ever on the emerald coast inline track uh, a track privately built and they invited a bunch of really good inline skaters there. We saw a handful of world champions, uh, Jacobo Mancia, we saw Ducho Marsili, and Steven Villegas from Colombia all battling it out there and uh, gave some quite interesting races. Hopefully we'll see more, especially international races, on that track here in the US. Should be fun. Yeah. So we're just picking winners for the weekend. There are two thousands, but we'll just say the first thousand. First thousand. Larry, who you got? In the men's or women's 500, we'll let you pick. I will not pick myself. I will stick with the women. I will go Aaron Jackson. Okay. Pick. I, I, I'm pretty sure which one you're going to pick, but pick the other. 
Jimmy. You can have a femke. <laughs> yeah. That was a kind one because I know Mitch is going to be heavy either way. Okay, for the men's 500, I am going to take big dog here. Laurent Dubray. Thank you. I appreciate it. Don't have to make the hard decision myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vic, who you got? It's a tough one. Uh, who, got, who got second behind you this week? I'm not saying. I'm yeah, keeping yeah. my. Yeah, yeah. He's got a strategy. Know. Yeah, of course. <laughs> comes down to whether Shinhama has the first or the last. Uh, Shinhama. Okay. I'll go hoping, Mor hoping I'll for go a Morishige. Morishige okay. got second. Uh, he did? Yeah. But uh, Shinhama, uh, if he had last outer, probably would have won. Vic, <laughs> women's thousand. Good. Okay. 16 out of 20 wins. Larry, I'll let you go second on this one. I'll go Miho. Okay. Uh, let me have the good one. Okay, I'll, I'll pick uh, men, or no, yeah, me picking the men's thousand. Hard to not take that. Yeah. There you go. I'll go Kiel. Okay. <laughs> you're making this hard. But I would have picked Jordan. <laughs> 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 oh, if we didn't clarify, you get three points for a win, one point for on the podium. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so those were... Uh, was it Nonomura? Somebody was pretty, yeah. Nonomura? No, 106, yeah, that was, no, that was a that. fast, uh, really fast 600. Two. No, no. Uh, Two second deep. <laughs> I think uh, Larry's up again? Yep. I'll uh, pick Miho. Okay. Yeah. Not a bad pick on that one. Yeah, well, that's a safe bet. It's been a few <laughs> seconds ahead. Probably. Vic? Um, a lot of dodge girls. It's been pretty... Uh, <laughs> I would have said Honavud if she was not flying in the day before. Uh-huh. Anthony is young. Okay. Oh, Rockne. I'm gonna go sure, with. Here. I'm gonna go Marika. Okay. Do we even? Is she qualified? Vic, <laughs> men's 15. Okay. Uh, J boy. Stoltz. Yes. Uh, That's not a Korean. I will go killed. Yeah. Uh, Kung Shao. Oh. After European. Yeah, I know it's fast and track. Up. Yeah, and World Cup. A faster track suits the two other guys better, but he uh, looks pretty good. He looks pretty good. Yeah. I don't want to. They're late arrival as well, but I'm still going to go. That's a tough one. Is it my turn or? Yeah. My hiker. Mentioned, he had a shot at the world record, so I'm gonna see <laughs> yeah. Patrick. Yeah, Patrick. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's basically. I can't believe you didn't go with your country, mate. I'm being <laughs> objective, you know. Yeah, like, right. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't want to play favorites. Yeah, no, no, no. A week ago, I think I would have considered Ted, just because he's so good at altitude. He's very good at altitude. Last year, I think he had a similar season. Then we had a 10k in Calgary, and he broke the track record. Um, yeah. Giotto and you can have I try my suit. Avida. Even though they also <sighs> I'm, right, really I'm like tempted that. to put Jordan, just so you know. <laughs> because he's a freak show. <laughs> Is he gonna <laughs> skate it? Yes. He will? Yeah. That's the plan. Uh yeah. But I'm gonna put an asterisk. Jordan, just so, so that yeah. I every, every you mentioned, it, you mentioned, mentioned it. it. Yeah, yeah, every 5k podium. That's yes. true, yeah. Uh, women's TP, Vic? That was harder than I thought it would be. Yep. I mean, Japan, if they put me over, I don't think they will. Um, Dodge, the Canadians. Say the Dodge. The Larry? Don't say. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna say Japan, and I hope our girls make me like prove me wrong. <laughs> oh, the man. Who picks on this one? Uh, that was me first. So I took the dodge. Okay, so me. Men's. Oh god. Ooh. With the heart or with the head? I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I gotta say it. Uh, 
That's a close one. That's a close one. You it's my turn. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'll say I'll say Canada. Now. Yeah. Okay. I would have said Norway for a win, but like you took them, so. Uh, and I'll go with the U.S. Fair enough. It was very close last week. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I said Canada, but I our A team is not skating it. That's a mistake. <laughs> no. Do you want to change? Uh, it's too late. Okay. Put it in. You're right. I think I think we might be in the B group. Like in fairness. I think we might be in the B group. <laughs> <laughs> We'll take their fastest time. <laughs> yeah. If they break the world record in the B group. Oh, it counts. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so there you, faith, faith. you go again. Uh, I'll go. So it's women's uh, mass start. Master. I'm going to say Iveni. Okay. Yeah. On? I wish we'll have Gonwe. Do you think they will let her win the European? So, uh, the men's, is men's mass start. Much harder to call. Yeah, oh, yeah. Vic, that's you. Yeah? Yep. Oh. Uh, I don't think Bart Holworth can make it in fast. I Swings has won a few here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go with Swings. On Wings. It's the safest best there is, I feel like. Yeah. Statistically, it's Swings. I think it's your turn. Okay, I will make it go with. Oh, I thought he was going to write Jordan. He's not doing it. I'm going to say whole world. Okay, mixed gender relay. It's our final here. Back to you. I have no idea who's doing it for whoever country, so I I'm going to no say idea. the Dutch because even if it's the, <laughs> the B or the C team, it's the good skaters, so. But I don't even know who's going to do it. I have no idea what a mixed gender relay is. Larry's been good about not being uh, playing favorites. Yeah, yeah, I'm very objective. Oh, Canada won the first one, so. I don't even know who's doing it for us this time around. It might be or might not be. Have you checked if you're answered? Yeah, I have no idea. We have left. There's a lot of countries, I think. Do you have Poland got sorry last time? They did. They got second. They got third, but we got DQ, so then they got second. Mm. Yeah. Poland did not get third. Maybe I go with Kimberly really uh, guessed it. Maybe I go with Denmark? Sentimental pick. <laughs> I like it. Nah. <laughs> no, no way. You know how many relay pushes we've done in practice? <laughs> We're gonna go with Japan on this one. Can you imagine that push? Shin Hamata Mio? Yeah. Well, so Number one on this side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that'll do it.